So uh, it seems like, you know, in the realm of Equestria, only the unicorns have magic, right? But where exactly Well, does the that... unicorns and Princess Celestia. Well, she's, and her she's a pegacorn. But what's the difference there? Well, I mean, does it mean that magic comes from horns? Well, Twilight Sparkle did say very specifically, magic comes from within. My magic, real magic, comes from within. It's a skill you're born with. It does come from and within. And she talked about all the other kinds of magic that are fake in some way. Like, they're not real magic, like zombies or curses or anything. But yet, what about that uh, that blue weed? It obviously had a magical effect. That well, was no, not... I think that was a biological effect, not a How magical How could the biological effect. effect have done all those things? Why not? Including making uh, apple teeny? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, you've had uh, there's like parasites in the real world Paras that can sprites. that can like you know that go in your foot and then make you want to put your foot in water and all sorts of ridiculous stuff like that. All right, but what about the mass conversion? The fact that it shrunk a apple teeny. So I think that it has to be magical. I just don't think it's the same kind of magic. Uh, I think it's still it's not magic. I think it's magic, but no. a different kind. It's not pony magic. I'll give you that. All right, but, but pony magic is the one that people care about, right? So right. pony magic has to come from somewhere. And while it seems like definitely a horn is a necessary implement, just like a magician needs a wand, right? It doesn't seem to be the actual source of the magic, right? Because I mean, in episode two, right? You got the 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 elements of harmony, and four out of six don't have horns. True. Right? But that was an external force. But they definitely contributed to the magic uh, that did come out of uh, Twilight's horn in some sort of magic circle sort so of So the fashion. horn, you think, is just the focus. Yeah. you need. But then why can't otherwise, like, no Earth Pony has magic at all. They don't have a horn. So they can't focus the energy. No, so but they could. What if we could create an artificial horn as a focus? It like, might you know, work. Like a wand. Maybe that's where wands come from. It's possible. Yeah. But it's like, because, so like, you know, Applejack could use magic, but she doesn't have a horn. So she has to, she, but she was able to give her, you know, enhanced Twilight's power through the magic circle by being an element of harmony. True, true. All right. That's why Twilight has a crown. The other people have necklaces. But then wh from where does the actual magic reside? Was it something that was always in ponies? Why is Princess Celestia so much more powerful, so much more different? Uh, where does the actual magic come from? Well, I don't think it's a, a divine magic because there don't seem to be any deities, right? Well, you could argue that the princess I are. Well, you would think that the princesses were deities, right? But we know that Princess Celestia has a nephew, right? See, they didn't explain means, that. Is it Luna's? Like, how is that? What's the lineage? I don't think the nephew is L Luna's or Celestia's child, which means there are more, they have more sisters. And those sisters are not making the sun and moon go up and down, right? So what are they doing? So here's what I'm thinking, right? I think that the... Um, if you look, all the magic, right? Twilight Sparkle is studying magic, like a D and D wizard, right? Yeah. She goes to school and studies it. It's a learned thing. It's basically science, right? And there's horns involved. Except that she gives up on the science right away when she's doing Pinkie Pie's magic. I'm sure. But anyway, but anyway in the Ever Free Forest, it doesn't seem that pony magic has any sway whatsoever. The Ever Free Forest just ain't natural. The plants grow, animals care for themselves, and the clouds move. All on their own! <laughs> right? That used to be, it's the former location of their previous palace. And well, they, the, the overall pony magic, the mythal, if you will. You know, I don't, you never played Forgotten Realms, but the elves had this thing called a mythal, which was like an overall magic. It's like, you, if you're a wizard, you could cast a spell. Mm -hmm. But wizards could get together and cast a mythal, which was like a magic tied to a place that would like control time and space and weather and do crazy huge things. Mm -hmm. I think that Equestria is basically a mythal created by Princess Celestia and her sister. Quite possibly, but I think, here's what I think. I think that there was a pre-Celestia and Luna time when the whole world was ever free. I think there right? were ponies in that There time. might have been earth ponies, but there was no pony magic. And I think at some point, there, you know, th there was, we tend to think like, you know, if Celestia is making the sun go up and down, that that was sort of the genesis, right? Yep. A few thousand years ago, right? But I think there was actually, you know, that's, that's like the creation myth. You can't go with that, right? Creation myth is wrong. It's actually evolution, right? The ponies we know, because they said so, they have babies the normal mammalian way. Now this, that actually makes sense in light of if the magic, because it comes from within, we know that mm -hmm. if it's blood-based, maybe the ponies didn't have magic originally. They were just earth ponies living in this normal world. Celestia and her sister come down for whatever reason. They're not ponies. They do not look like ponies. Yeah, they're horses. I think they interbred with the earth well, ponies. Well, Luna is a pony. 
Because I think that's where the magic comes from. I think that by interbreeding, notice how the Earth ponies, some of them have one yeah. of her aspects. They either have, they're a Pegasus or a unicorn. I think the sun and the moon used to go up and down by their goddamn selves, and the clouds used to move by themselves, and all that stuff, right? And I think that much in the way that humans have used science to sort of, you know, manually control the world, as opposed to allowing nature to just take its course, pony magic is the same thing. It's the ponies, you know, at some point, I don't know, you know, how... Right. You know, Celestia figured maybe Celestia was like the first magician. She's like, you know, something like that. And she figured out magic before anyone else. And she figured out immortality and she figured out all this stuff. So she could make this. She's like, you know, so she finally was like, I'll make the sun go up and down. And that way, you know, well, the weather will be exactly what I want. Because, I mean, if you could. Right, what's better than weather control? Right. Yeah. You wouldn't. Of mind. course. Look at all the problems this caused. I mean, we don't really we can't talk about it now. This is a whole separate discussion. But look at the how much caretaking the world requires within Equestria due but it also magic. solves a lot of problems that we have in the normal world. You know, you don't have to worry about the economy because everyone has a job taking care of the weather. Right? She sort that, of, I think she figured all it out. She was like a genius. She discovered all of this. So right? this is some sort I of think communist she may have society. Even, she may have even given herself uh, horn and wings with this. You know, she discovered this powerful magic. And at some point, and then, you know, because she was just so powerful, she just became you know, the, the ruler, much like if I actually went outside and had magic powers, people would start to worship me. And after thousands of years, she's just de facto the king. I think an equally queen, possible, because we don't see any other horses. That's the only reason I'm not too with this theory. I think that gods or whatever, whoever her parents were. I think maybe, they were just regular ponies. I don't think so. I think she came from outside. She is some hunger from outside. It's possible. Came into the land and set all of this up, interbred with the local ponies, and as a result, the ponies have her characteristics. They have a shadow of her magic. They're not nearly as powerful. I mean, look at her hair. She could be an she, extraterrestrial pony of some kind. It's like in The Prince of Nothing, when Kellis, as he becomes more and more powerful, starts to have this halo around his hands all the time. There's the mark of the magic he has used. I think she is otherworldly. She, is, she and her sister are gray shade. And the ponies mm. are black shade with gray stats sometimes. Yeah. So what's white shade? It's her parents or whatever made her and her sister Luna. It who could... we, we never see. What's up with that? Yeah, well, I mean, well, you see her in episode two. And, and then it. she never comes back. I mean, she's only she, out at night. Is she in some sort of gulag? Like, what happened to her? I don't know. Maybe she's just hanging out in the old castle and never free forward. No, because she was riding around Ponyville in a chariot. Yeah. So, <laughs> if, so magic, regardless of where it comes from, you know, the ponies have power over it. And Celestia is ultra powerful. She still lets a lot of bad things happen to the ponies. So how much control does she really have? Like well, I mean, how much does she can run it? That's everything? why I was saying is I, you know, whether she's from outside or whether she discovered magic on her own, right? The fact is she's doing all this actual work and it's a lot of freaking work to make the sun go up and down every goddamn day. You know, that's, you know, whenever you see her, she's usually lounging with guards, you know, like in her little room getting notes. She doesn't walk around a whole lot. When she does go somewhere, she's got guys pulling her around, even though she can fly. Well, she you, only flies a little bit. We know that she definitely responds to crises, like when Philadelphia had the uh, Paris infestation. Yeah, sure. But, you know, I mean, there's, there's you know, serious problems. Like how I'm sure if like a dragon came to, you know, Canterlot, she would deal with it. But she doesn't need to go and, you know, she, most of the time she's like, here, I'll send you guys on a quest. I don't so the to. monsters must, must be a natural part of the world. If she, she wouldn't be creating them just to cause trouble for the ponies, would she? No, this is why I think there was a, the, the story of Celestia is not the Genesis story. There were ponies in existence and creatures of all kinds were living on this world. And I think Equestria is only a country in the world, right? And they all... Well, we know that because Zakora came from this other so, country. Yeah, some other, right? She's not from the Everfree Forest. So the rest of the world is natural, but for some, there was, a, you know, the story of Celestia is not the story of the genesis of the world and the genesis of biology. It's the story of, you know, the creation of the country of Equestria.